Welcome back to the HODL Report and our six-part series, Introduction to Cryptocurrency. Today is part two, What is an Exchange? Our primary goal with this series is to help someone that, ha that wants to take that first bold step towards investing in cryptocurrency, hasn't done it yet. Uh, many are intimidated by the stock market, so it's truly understandable why someone would be intimidated by cryptocurrency. Um, and that's what we're about on this series and on the channel. We want to simplify and make it a little bit more available. This is Jeff with the HODL Report. Join me on today's journey into the world of cryptocurrency as we answer the pressing question, what is an exchange? Before we get started, let me read a brief disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial advisor. But if I am going to offer any advice, that is, when investing in cryptocurrency, you must do your own research and only invest what you're prepared to lose and only buy those cryptocurrencies that you yourself are comfortable with. That's it. Okay, let's get started and we'll start discussing the exchanges. All right, so where do we start? Um, let's take a look at some of the ex exchanges that are available, and there are quite a few of them. We're only going to cover a handful. Today I want to give you a little flavor, a little sampling of exchanges, but here's some of the exchanges that are out there. Coinbase, one of the more popular ones that you've heard of. Binance, one of the largest uh, exchanges that are available right now. Bitstamp is an exchange that's based over in, in Europe. Um, Uphold is a brand new exchange. I just started working with it. I actually, I really like using it. The hold period's a little bit longer um, when you exchange, but it's super, super easy to use. And we're gonna cover that a little bit in part three, um, actually getting into the exchange. Today, we're gonna do a basic review. That might be enough for you. Um, Kraken, Gemini, Bittrex, Huobi, Shapeshift, we're gonna cover a little today, and Changely. So these exchanges are available in your browser as well as in an app that you can download um, and use on your phone. So before we get into the exchanges, let's cover a little bit of terminology so we're all on the same page. Um, an exchange is a company that, again, is available on the website or via an app. Think of an exchange as a broker of sorts, similar to, let's say, an E-Trade. It's the exchange. So it allows you to exchange fiat currency to cryptocurrency or cryptocurrency for another cryptocurrency. So from that, let's discuss and understand what pairing means. Pairing is something that we're going to see on the different exchanges. Pairing is what allows you to exchange between a fiat currency and a cryptocurrency or different cryptocurrencies. Not all of the exchanges will allow you to pair every single cryptocurrency, so they might be limited and we'll show that, I'll go through that. Um, but a pairing would be, as an example, USD for BTC, which is US dollars for Bitcoin or Bitcoin for US dollars. That means you can buy and trade US dollars for Bitcoin and vice versa. Some sites won't give you direct access for fiat currency to crypto, so it might only be crypto to crypto. Um, and again, some might even, the fiat currency is limited to the country of origin of the exchange to where you're exchanging. Um, and we're only going to be covering the US dollar um, exchange. However, when we get into uphold, we're going to see that we can buy a lot more than just cryptocurrency. Um, charts, so charts, exactly what it sounds like. And a, an example would be like stockcharts.com if you, if you trade stock. TradingView has both stock and cryptocurrency, quite extensive options for for different views um, and so you can get a lot more in depth and use a lot of the uh, different uh, uh, trading uh, uh, triggers um, that you could use on let's say a stock charts there's a lot of different uh, features very feature rich um, so that's really it for a terminology I don't want to get too in depth in that so let's get into looking at the different exchanges and we're going to start with Coinbase all right Coinbase. So let's take a look. We're not logging into the accounts uh, right yet. We're going to cover that a little bit in part three. Uh, but so for today, and this is kind of what it looks like when you log in, uh, you're going to have an option for different currencies and then the pairing thereof. Um, so the pairings that you have available on Coinbase, um, you can put fiat currency and use your checking account 
to move money into Coinbase and hold it there as you would on, let's say, an E-Trade. Um, but you can move uh, USD. You can then buy Bitcoin. You can buy Bitcoin Cash. You can buy Ethereum. You can buy Litecoin. So all of these are tradable. They're all paired with US dollar on the exchange. So um, this is what it would look like in the exchange. Um, you have your portfolio view, recent activity view. Um, you can see, depending on which one you select, you'll see a little bit of the, the daily, weekly, monthly, annual activity. Um, and then it's also available on, as an app on your phone. What's unique about Coinbase is that it allows you to set up re, uh, uh, recurring buys. So let's say you wanted to make sure that you were pulling money out of your checking account every single week or every day or once a month, twice a month, whatever it is. You can schedule a daily, weekly, monthly buy where it automates the process. I want to put $25 a week. I want to put $100 a week. I want to put $1,000 a month. And I don't want to worry about it. I just want to automatically buy. And it's going to automatically dollar cost average because I'm going to continuously buy Bitcoin every single month. It's going to do it automatically. That's a nice feature if that's something that you want to do and, and have it in the back of your mind and forget about it. Vault protection is nice. So this means that any currency that's held on Coinbase is secure. Um, and actually, I was reading uh, about, and here it is here, it's all protected by insurance. So if they were ever breached, they would back up all of your holdings. They're insured for all of your holdings. Uh, but what's different, there, are, and if you've read the news, um, there are some exchanges in the past that have been hacked and coins have gone missing. Uh, many of the exchange have compensated uh, their holders for what was lost. In this case, it's protected by insurance, but Coinbase actually holds the majority, I would say, uh, pretty much all of your currency is held in an offline storage account, so it's not accessible uh, for hacking purposes. And when you want to move the money, um, they'll move it back in, and there's a delay in the move so that's an added layer of protection. So that is Coinbase. Coinbase is, is a nice uh, option to use. They have some basic charts uh, to dig into. As we can see here, this is what it looks like when you're logged into. You can go to Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum, Litecoin. You can look at, at how, the, you know, how it looks over a period of time. Um, but you can't really get in depth into the charting. That's when we get into Coinbase Pro. So Coinbase Pro will actually offer you, and you can see here, here's a BTC to USD pairing. That means they can be traded for each other. Here you have the order book. As people are buying and selling, you see the, the level continuously moving, how much people are buying, how much people are selling, what quantity, what price point they, they were buying and selling at. Here's a trade history. So we're looking at the at, at every single trade that's occurred. Here, these are the uh, the orders. These are what people want to sell. Here's what's actually sold or bought. And then we see it in a different view. These are the actual charts as the pricing has gone up and down. You're probably familiar with this if you've looked ever looked at a stock chart. Um, then you have a little bit of some options here, and you can change some of the overlays and add <coughs> some different features. And then you also have a depth chart here which is all the different buys and sell orders that are out there from the order book and just a different way of looking at uh, at what's available then we dig into coinbase prime now this is brand new this is the exchange that's available for institutional clients this isn't retail this is a huge mega step forward um, in this in this industry uh, for cryptocurrency, which is going to rapidly bring in institutional money. And Coinbase is on the forefront uh, to make that happen. So let's now jump into Binance. Binance is actually now it hosted out of Malta, originally in China. Then they moved to the exchange to Japan. So over this period of time, um, there is you know, all this dispute over regulations in the different countries and determine and, and really debating on you know what what's legitimate what's not legitimate um, and so they decided you know what we're just going to move 
our exchange to where um, the the government is more favorable. So um, in Malta, they're super favorable. Binance is probably one of the world's largest exchanges. They've grown exponentially. They offer a significant number of uh, of trading uh, options and trading pairings. Um, so let uh, let's open up uh, and see what it looks like. So when we talk about pairing, and now this is live right now, so we can see over here we see the pricing. This is uh, all taking place as we speak. And these are the different pairings over here on the right. So here's a Bitcoin pairing. So it's Bitcoin for lots and lots and lots of other coins. There's coins here that um, you have to really research. And there's a lot. There's tons and tons of coins out there. So uh, we're not really going to be getting into that today. Um, these are the order books. This is the trade history. Um, and so the pairings, the primary pairing can be Bitcoin. It can be Ethereum. It can be BNB. BNB is actually the cryptocurrency of Binance, the exchange, which in itself has some nice value. And here you see something called USDT. This is actually a cryptocurrency called USD Tether. Every USDT is backed up by one US fiat dollar, and the exchange is within cents. It could be 99 cents. Uh, it could be dollar uh, one, dollar two, but it stays within a close proximity to the dollar to allow people all over the world to rest their money in something that is called stay a stable coin, something stable. Um, so if you made your money on a Bitcoin, you want to rest it somewhere, you don't have to pull it out of this exchange. They don't have a fiat hold. Um, so you put it into USDT, which is US dollar tether. So it's tethered to the U.S. dollar. So this is Binance, um, and you can see that you can even get into Trading View, and we can look at, at the depth uh, chart here. Um, this it's actually it's a really nicely put together trading platform. I've used Binance. I like Binance. Um, my my primary right now has been somewhere between Coinbase, Binance, and Uphold. Uphold is brand new. Uphold um, allows you to move U.S. dollar to Bitcoin quickly. 35 currencies, <coughs> gold, platinum, silver. Uh, bit, uh, Uphold has a lot of options. Um, it's, it's relatively new. Um, I actually uh, have really enjoyed using Uphold. Um, it's real simple. Um, let me go straight to um, sending money um, on Uphold here. I want to just briefly bring you through it. You can go to uphold.com, explore the website a little bit, um, but um, it truly is very easy. You can do it through your, your phone app. When I originally uh, signed up, I did everything through my phone, right through the app. So you can connect your checking account. It'll ask you to add your ID for security. But once you're verified and confirmed, you're already buying cryptocurrency. Now, on the first exchange, it held it took about eight nine days once I committed to buying something and I was able to buy directly from US dollars to XRP it the whole time was about eight days but it locked me into the price when I bought it so I knew I was going to have it within eight days again this isn't really for trading uh, you don't want it uh, you know instantaneous so as we know it's just gonna hold over for a period of time but you have a lot of options in terms of what you're going to be holding uh, your your uh, currency so it's all holdable right on uphold um, it's not necessarily a bank but um, they do claim that your money is safe and actually all these different cards actually appear when you're in in uphold so 30 uh, currencies and commodities so and that's growing uh, all the time they're planning on adding um, a lot more uh, to uh, to uphold so Let's take a look at some of these currencies. So just this list. I mean, it's just, it's pretty impressive. You can go on right now and just buy and hold any of the currencies, um, any of the uh, cryptocurrencies, any of the commodities like silver or platinum. So um, a lot of that is available. And that's unique. That's unique with Uphold. So I know I spent a little bit more time on uphold than the others but I think this really deserves a lot of uh, 
coverage because it is so unique. Um, and this is similar to what you're going to see when you're logged in um, in terms of what's available. So if you want to buy um, UAE Durham, you can buy that and hold uh, Durham if you want to buy the Philippine Peso. Um, so theoretically, you could uh, hold uh, pretty much any of these currencies, um, it, not just in theory, but in, in practicality. So let's move on. Let's go to Shapeshift. Um, Shapeshift is unique. Um, Shapeshift and, and Changely are different in that um, they don't have a wallet associated so there's no holding of your currency this is just a pairing um, where you have to have one address and another address so let's say in this case um, we're going to choose our deposit so let's say we want to deposit Bitcoin cash um, that's what we're going to put in now we want to exchange it for the receiving end I want to get um, Bitcoin gold let's say so let's continue. So what it's going to ask me for is my Bitcoin Gold destination address. So the address is your key, your public key. And then they want your Bitcoin Cash refund address. So um, we're going Bitcoin Gold where it's going, Bitcoin Cash where just in case it defaults and they need to. And it gives us the, in, the, uh, the instant rate. So one Bitcoin Cash equals 26 Bitcoin Gold. Um, it tells you what your minimum deposit has to be, which is 0 .00007528, um, and then your deposit maximum. This is what your max is for um, the deposit, and then there's a, a minor fee. That's another conversation. Um, you can get in. You can read all about it here. But my my point here was really to show that Shapeshift is really interesting. So I want to deposit. I'm going to sell Bitcoin and I want to buy Ethereum so I hit continue so I have to put my Ethereum address this is my public address I put my refund address which is my public Bitcoin address in case the transaction fails it knows where to put my money back to so these are long addresses you hit agree if I say reusable address I'll save it and then I start the transaction and that's it and then it it makes it happen and it'll, uh, it'll allow the transaction to take place all right so um, just I want to get in and do a little bit of a wrap-up uh, summary now I've used each of the exchanges that we discussed today uh, coinbase um, coinbase pro which used to be GDAX, uh, Binance shapeshift um, even bitstamp I've used Kraken. I've used a lot of them but the ones I highlighted uphold so coinbase is really a great way for a novice to get started um, there's limited coins to choose from uh, currently, it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum. That's what's available. Um, but Coinbase has really simplified uh, the crypto investment experience. So I can recommend using Coinbase. It's uh, the, the, your, the holdings, the wallets are insured on Coinbase. So that's a really nice feature for someone just getting into it. Um, Coinbase Pro, um, same. basically it's the same thing as Coinbase. You move your currency over to Coinbase Pro, which gives you the charting. Uh, you don't necessarily need it, but the, the cost of the exchange is also a little bit less. Um, so there are some pro, some benefit of going to Coinbase Pro, which used to be GDAX. Um, Binance offers a very wide selection of cryptocurrencies, as we just saw. Um, I like that. There's four primary pairing options, uh, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, um, BNB um, and USDT. So uh, BNB being the Binance uh, cryptocurrency and USD being the USD Tether. So um, it also hosts different charts. Um, we saw the order book. We, it, it has wallets to hold each one of your cryptocurrencies that you buy. Um, we saw Shapeshift. Shapeshift is, is just an exchange. It's a real easy way to exchange your currency, but you need to have wallets because you're not going to hold your money um, on the uh, Shapeshift. And then Uphold, which uh, really it's the newest. I really do like Uphold. And, and like Coinbase, I think it's very, very simple for a novice to get started. And then you can buy um, other fiat currencies. You can buy commodities if you want to uh, trade commodities. So you have a lot of options. There's a few different cryptocurrencies on Uphold. So you've got Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin, cold, uh, Bitcoin Gold, 
um, Dash, Ethereum, Litecoin, and XRP. So I've been using uh, I've been using Uphold recently to buy Litecoin and XRP as I've been trying it out. So and I found it very very easy to use. So part one and part two, I feel that you should be armed and a, with a little bit more ammunition. You should be a little bit more confident than you were before watching part one and part two. Uh, you should be a bit more self-sufficient where you're going to uh, you're searching on the coin market cap or coinpuffs.com and looking um, and researching the different cryptocurrencies. Now you've seen the exchanges you can get on and maybe register on Uphold, register on Coinbase, go through that process. I think that's a great learning experience. We went over a little bit of the terminology. So that's it. I feel that by next video when we get in and we talk a little bit more about the wallets and even the uh, the offline storage, we're going to talk about that a little bit. You know, how do you secure your cryptocurrency? So you should already be at that point where we can start talking about the hardware wallet and um, and you should be fully uh, fully comfortable. Um, after that, maybe you'll uh, start buying a, a few cryptocurrencies. So even though we'll have uh, part three and then we have a few more uh, uh, chapters after that in the series that we're going to get more in depth into this whole world so that's it for now if you like today's video go ahead and uh, give us a thumbs up if you really like the channel and you want to make sure that you're uh, up to date as we uh, upload new videos go ahead and subscribe to our channel we'd really appreciate that click the bell for a notification if you want to be notified every time we upload a new video and until next time See you on the HODL report.